Hi everybody, all my followers, welcome to another video. Uh, this video today is on a 2008 Fiat Ducato, I think is how you pronounce it. And um, uh, this car came to me, or this van, this truck, uh, came to me because of the following problem. I'm gonna start the engine. So, that's the problem, as you've seen. Uh, you went off and came ABS light went off and came straight back on. So, uh, a little bit of the background, um, according to what I have been told, uh, the ABS unit has been replaced, I think, two times already. The last time they replaced it, uh, the old pump is right there. And uh, this is the Bosch 8 ABS unit. And I'm going to show you what the code says so was two codes here one uh, I think is going to come back because it's to do one of the wheel sensors uh, but I will look at that later but the problem that we're gonna have to tackle first was well, actually still here um, is the top one uh, that says uh, valve relay error code C1121 now this is a quite common problem on these ABS units and uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to attempt not to repair the pump that's on the track at the moment because this is a, is a quite long track uh, to be here on my driveway and I'm going to have to get rid of some of these cars here before I actually get these in because otherwise this is that long that it actually goes all the way from the front of the, from the, front of the house up to the walkway and it's a little bit on the walkway and I don't want this here uh, like that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at the the pump that has been removed uh, because according to the owner uh, that was exactly the same fault on the other pump so this pump here so this pump was suffering from exactly the same fault and obviously the one that's fitted now as you can see is the same fault as well to be fair with you uh, what I should do really was to plug this old unit that one plug it in scan and see if that was actually the same fault according to the owner I'm gonna trust the owner on this one uh, he said to me is these two codes that keeps coming back so the bottom code because it's keep coming back doesn't matter which ECU you we're talking about I believe that's not gonna have nothing to do with the pump It's gonna probably have to do whether they're actually uh, something on the car, although they said the sensor has been changed, so we're gonna trace that fault at a later stage. Uh, but the top one is is the one that is part of the, the unit itself, and we're gonna have a look at it. I will show you, I'll take you through, and um, and then when the truck comes back to get the pump refitted, then hopefully um, I will show you the code. Um, well, I will just show you the repair, really. So, so yeah, no further ado. Uh, let's gonna take this pump uh, to the workshop and uh, let's gonna have a look at it okay so here we are um, I wanted to just speed up things while I was on the, on the, on the, on the track because it's cold today has been snowing most of the day uh, and and it's been it's freezing outside it's about minus four degrees or five so I just wanted to get uh, quick. Um, I just did that bit on the van because I didn't want to start the video here. I wanted to show you on the van first what the problem is and what it's doing. And I, I just thought it would worth to do it like that. But now we are here and the first thing I'm going to do on this pump. Now, uh, just a little bit of background. Or not background, just a little bit of info. So, the, the reason why we're going to fix this pump or we're going to attempt to repair this pump and not the one that's on the van is because as I said they replaced the pump or the, the module and they are left exactly the same two errors um, the one for the solenoid it was the solenoid I think it was or the valve um, and the one for the sensor which to me just means very unlikely and before that they replaced so these the, the, the unit that's on the track is the third unit they they fit try to fix the problem uh, bear in mind they are second-hand units so obviously it's always a guesswork when you do with second-hand units uh, unless it's someone that can guarantee you uh, 
uh, is a good second hand unit so but I, I don't know so anyway is the third one so these units the ABS uh, Bosch ABS 8 they are quite prone to this problem and I'm going to show you the problem hopefully that's going to be why the problem is going to be here and I can I'll, I will obviously be be able to show you it can be something else I really hope not because that will be a easy fix as a such um, and we will be able to repair this unit uh, and as I was saying the reason why we're not going to take the other one out as I was saying one uh, the one in there and this one they were exactly the same problem uh, second like I said uh, while I was in the van is a long track and I don't have the room at the moment so we'll hopefully we'll get this one re repaired and then all I need to do is get the track here again replace the units and job done so the first thing I'm gonna do here we're gonna separate the modulator, or I think is how it's called, so this aluminum block from the actual electronics unit, uh, which is old with these four uh, bolts. So we're going to take them out, and this should just slide out. Okay, so I removed uh, the screws, uh, the bolts, and all we need to do now really is just separate these two parts. Try to bring them up uh, evenly, and there we have. So the connection to the motor and all the the in and out valves for the ABS. We don't need this for now. And have a problem. Oh, I'm going to clean this a little bit because there's a little bit of oil around here and stuff. But uh, most likely, that our problem uh, is going to be. Uh, inside this module right at the back so we're gonna have to cut the lead off uh, this lead I don't think is gonna come out just by cutting the silicone I will try to cut this to remove this silicone around and try to lift it if it doesn't come out like that I'm just gonna cut it all the way around and then we'll get it sealed again uh, I'm gonna find the best way to do it and then uh, I will get back to you Okay, and we are nearly there. So what I've done is I've cut, I can't see the phone. Um, I've cut with a sharp blade. So this is a little bit of a, a gap here, about two millimeters. So I've cut first close to the cover, all the way around. Then I've done it again, close to the actually outside. Uh, and then with a, a small spatula, I've just start to I've, I've removed all the excess of the silicone a little bit and now I've started to slowly try to pry the cover out okay you need to be gentle don't put too much uh, pressure because you don't want to break and just start to alleviate all the way around and I don't know how well the camera is going to show this let me see why the camera is actually let me move the camera actually Maybe to here, you might be able to actually see what's going on. Something like this, and you're gonna see, watching here, you're gonna see that the lead starts to lift. You see that? It started to separate from, from this case, so and as you do this, you can feel and hear the silicone, this sort of glue, start to break. So I'm just going to carry on until I manage to actually separate the two parts. Okay, so we removed the cover. So I've just carried on uh, pushing and we removed it. And unfortunately, I won't be able to do, to do absolutely nothing with this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this video anyway because surely it might be interesting uh, for some of you guys out there. Now I was hoping, and that's what I'm gonna try to show you here. Let me take this out of the way, and then I'll show you exactly where the problem is in here. I was hoping that my problem would be on one of these connections here here or here 
or these ones. This is what I, I was really hoping uh, that my problem would be. Uh, but unfortunately, this module is actually gone uh, in a much, much smaller level. <laughs> and I'm going to show you. So, uh, once I put the the microscope, I've started to follow the board. I've been touching it with the tweezers a little bit. Uh, because uh, what you're going to see is one of these... So, you have these little jumpers here, these wires here. And you have the same on the actually PCB on this uh, ceramic uh, uh, board. You have little jumpers everywhere, and you have obviously jumpers from the chips into the PCB. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, one of the wires is like if it's burned completely all the way. And I, I just went in there with the tweezers. See if the wire was uh, was actually completely gone inside the this gel, or if it was just detached. But the wire actually does not exist there anymore, and you gotta understand exactly what I'm talking about when I show you. Okay, so I know some of you would prefer a uh, screen recording than this, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm not that posh. Right. Anyway, let's gonna see if I can show you now. Now, because I've been touching that area, the gel is a little bit broken up, messed with, so we're going to create some reflections that were not supposed to be there. But, I'm going to show you first what are these wires I'm talking about. It's too close. Okay. Right, let's kind of focus this. Hang on, it's the other way. Oh, there, there they are. Okay, so you can see all these wires there. These little wires here. That run from the chip into the PCB, okay? And there's little jumpers like this everywhere around the board. Obviously on every single chip, blah, blah, blah. And then you have some that run as a jumpers. I don't know where they are now. They're gonna be somewhere. Oh, there you are. There is one. Okay. Now, the problem with this module is in there. So, yes, I know the gel is a little bit messed about because I, I was. You see this brown one? And that little bit of a burn on, on the chip itself? So, all I was trying to understand is if that wire there was still in there, or if that just burned completely inside the gel and just left that sort of you know that sort of residues in there and I can confirm you that uh, the wire does not exist there anymore uh, all you have in there is basically the wire just melted or burned and all you have in there now is is is, is what left you know all the is what you see in there really but it's burned as you can see it's burned on the chip itself and obviously in there so I can only imagine that this chip is the chip that sends the info for that solenoid to obviously to work. And as you can see, it's gone. But this is another level, guys. It's way too small for me to do anything with this. Uh, you would have... It, it, this would have to be done pretty much with an ultrasonic... Uh, soldering and and all that stuff is is no, no chance uh, no chance nothing i can do i was really hoping that these ones these big ones let me focus just curiosity i was hoping that these connections here were my problem these big ones here here or even if they were in there even if with those in there let me show you even if it was those there, the big ones on this side, I, would, I could deal with those, no problem. But these ones, forget about it. It's nothing I can do, never, 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 never. Well, I won't be able to do nothing with this. I just want to show you again with the phone, perhaps here a little bit better. 
and especially if I put some light to it so there it is so these ones here I could deal with this no problem uh, but the other ones it is a shame so all I'm gonna do really uh, I'm just surprised how the guy get a get three pumps with the exactly exactly same problem uh, I know it's a common problem on these pumps anyway uh, kind of um, but there is another thing um, that I want to make sure is that uh, there is nothing that is actually making this to happen so what I want to do as well is making sure that uh, there is nothing on the car that somehow is I don't know short to positive or short to ground and is actually causing this problem it would be very interesting and I might do that to open the pump that is on the car at the moment and see if we have the same failure because if we do have the same failure then yes there is a possibility that there is something on the car that is actually causing this issue so I just thought about it now and I think actually it's what I'm going to do I was to end this video here and saying I couldn't fix it well I can't fix it theoretically I, well I can't really fix it but actually I'm gonna I'm gonna do that I'm gonna ask for the van and uh, and I'm gonna check just curiosity I'm gonna get a probably a module a, mo a, a, a known good module and get it replaced myself and then open the other module because it would be interesting if the owner allows me obviously it would be interesting to see if the other pump has failed exactly in the same place um, or I will my ring the guy and you know, I will ask him for that other pump because this being the pump on the car being the third pump that means he has two pumps this one and another one and it would be interesting to see that so yeah let's see what we're gonna do then okay so this is now like two or three days later I I managed to get the in-between pump if that makes any sense so I have a little bit more info now so the pump or the unit the module I've been showing you is the original module from the car okay uh, that came up with the original or with the first two codes which is the codes according to the owner is exactly the same codes as we as as we have seen at the beginning of the video but this was the original pump they fitted this pump came up exactly the same two codes then they fit the pump that's in there now which was the pump we scanned at the start of the video and guess what the same two codes so just as I said earlier and I don't want to be repeating myself uh, again but although already doing it so I'm now thinking if there is something on the car that is making these pumps to fail uh, so what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna open this pump exactly the same as we did on this one and I want to see under the microscope exactly where the damage is and so I'm not going to take you through the opening the pump because I've showed you that uh, on that one so we're going to open this and, and then we're going to check it okay, so the unit is also open and obviously I couldn't wait for the camera to be on to have a peek inside and I need to show you this under the microscope I'm going to turn the computer on uh, and I need to show you this and um, the the main thing well I'll show you when we get to the computer okay so we're gonna put this into the microscope I'll tell you what why I don't get the aromalians like this right um, what I've done is the old module the first model I'll show you uh, I marked it down as module A and on this one I marked it down as module B now if you remember if you don't go back and you've seen I've been disturbing the gel around the burnt area on this one if you remember so that's so you don't think well you can see two modules but well we have all those keyboard warriors isn't it Leon uh, that obviously like to uh, sometimes just come along and well so for you not to think that uh, I'm uh, I'm come up with this so you remember the gel was disturbed in that area. I'm going to show you this one first anyway. 
and then you're gonna see this one that is absolutely intact but at the naked eye just looking into the same position as that chip I can see already that something the phone is probably not gonna show oh actually it does if you look right there in that, at the end of my nail you can see something there but we're gonna watch under the microscope and we're gonna see that it's exactly the same place so let's gonna uh, turn the LED on on the thingy and the first thing I'm gonna show you so let me point the microscope uh, the microscope the phone to the screen okay I'm not gonna even turn the camera off you just need to watch a little bit longer this but okay let's gonna put the camera facing again just like was the other day oops it's gonna put the camera facing the screen I need to get some sort of uh, well I'm not that posh right it's gonna get the software running okay so what we're gonna do now is let me try to see if I can get a little bit closer of course I can let me take the keyboard out of the way away okay Okay, I think that will be more than enough for you guys to see it. So that's gonna go. I'm gonna show you uh, module A, which is the old one first. And we're gonna see... There's the damage right there. <coughs> so I'm gonna show you the damage that we saw on the last, well, two days ago when I've showed you this. When I recorded the last bit, so... We're gonna look at that damage where the burn was. Let me focus. Lovely. Okay, there it is. Okay, you can't miss that, guys, can you? So you can see the gel that is all disturbed because I've been messing around with the tweezers in there, but you can see the burn in there. Okay, it's easy to see. It's burned on the actually uh, chip itself, and then obviously the wire. And uh, and all the connections are on there, yeah. God, no, please. Okay. Let me get. Let me show you again a little bit more. Why is it getting so far? Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. So okay, so you can see that, yeah. Now I'm gonna slide module B underneath there. I'm gonna try to put it in there exactly in the same position. And please look at the gel, okay? So you don't say that I have... Why is losing focus? Okay. So look at the gel. Now I'm going to show you the, the module we have just opened. And look at that. Can you see that? is burnt in the exactly same position exactly the same pin exactly the same wire if you count you have the gap in between and is the second wire but when you look actually on the chip itself it looks like both actually burned but the second one definitely is gone and if you look on the module A which was the one we opened first you're gonna see that is actually the same pin, the second pin after that gap right there. So I think there is no need to be here thinking about it or anything else. So both modules have burned exactly in the same place. So under percent well 99.99999% nine sure that the problem is on the car there's something on the on the van on the car on the van on the truck that's obviously is is burning the, the the modules now i could have avoided to open the second pump uh, i could have just measured the, the plug because 
I have the pin out so I could measure the plug. I know exactly uh, where everything should be and probably I'll show you that at a later stage. Uh, I just don't know yet or when. But I could have just measured it and I'm sure I'm going to find something on that plug. A voltage, a ground, something there that shouldn't be. So, but the problem is, one, like I said, I don't have the room to put such a long truck. Uh, and, and I need to get all the cars out of here uh, because that's a really long truck and, and, uh, and you know, I, I don't want to leave the truck like it was with a little bit of the back on the actual walkway. So I'm going to need room. But second, um, it's been snowing over the last two or three days. Uh, so yeah. It's not very good. It's been snowing. There is about, I don't know, three, four degrees, minus three or four degrees Celsius. I know there's colder in other place, but to work on the outside is, is not very good, guys. So basically, uh, what I said to the guy was pretty much like this. Bring me the, 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 the last pump that was fitted on the car. Let me have a look. If I find what I think I'm gonna find, which I did, Damn it, I need to play the Aramillions. I really do, do need. Um, I said to him, look, we, we, we'll arrange that for a later date uh, for you to bring the, to bring the track and I will, I will check it. Uh, but so far, if all the pumps are suffering from the same problem, I have a feeling that's going to be something on the car, 100%. 99.9999% uh, sure that's going to be something on the car. Sorry, I'm with a horrible cough. Um, so I think that's it really for now. Uh, I'm gonna have to wait for the for the snow to melt. I'm gonna have to wait for a little bit of better weather and uh, then hopefully they will bring me the truck. And, um, and yeah, we'll check it and we're gonna try to find out where the problem is, uh, what is actually causing these pumps or these modules to actually burn. Okay, so the weather is now much better. It's been raining, and but the truck is here now. It's been here for about a week and a half, but it's been raining and I didn't have the chance. So I, I got the headlight out and uh, to expose the ABS unit. And um, the first thing I'm gonna do is unplug that. I'm gonna get unplugged and um, I think obviously this pump as you have seen from the scan itself um, this pump is this unit here is the one that is faulty uh, is the so we have the two units which one was the original that faulted then we had the second unit they put in which we opened already and I've showed you so it was the two units I've showed you opened and this is the third unit uh, the one that we first scan uh, is still faulty so we still have the exactly same two faults in there um, and the first thing I'm going to do is unplug this I have the pin out for that uh, for this module and we're going to check if we have all the values uh, all the signals in the correct place or if there or if there is anything there that's going to trigger some some uh, some light at uh, this problem um, hopefully by the looks of it, we might be able to somehow remove just the module without unplugging the modulator again. Um, but that's going to be something that we're going to have to look at that later. But for now, we're going to do that. We're going to unplug that and we're going to measure it. Okay, so from yesterday, uh, we did a little bit of work. As you know, it was raining yesterday and, and, and after that last clip, it actually started to rain. So I had to rush a little bit to get a little bit done. Um, but I didn't record it anyway. Um, so yesterday, as I said, we have unplugged the, the module. There is a plug from this loom that's right here. That plugs right there at the bottom. That's for the rear uh, ABS sensors. And we actually managed to remove the actually module from the modulator without actually removing the pump whatsoever so we're not going to need to bleed brakes and all that stuff so i had to take those rubber bushings from there so i had to move the pump slightly in order to get all, to get to the screws uh to the bolts that holds this but it's easy easy doable no no issues at all so 
<clears throat> what I'm going to do now, as I, I think I said on the last clip as well, we're going to measure, I want to see the voltages I have here, if they are, if they are all uh, in the correct places. So yeah, we're going to measure this and um, try to understand what's going on. Um, I have the diagrams here. Here I have the diagrams uh, for this uh, unit. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to follow this and see what we can find. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to measure the voltage um, to the to the module. Um, it was not easy to put everything here in the field of view uh, with the phone, but I think it's you can read the screen, you can see what I'm doing. So, so yeah, we're going to read uh, measure voltage. So um, the voltage they should come on these first four pins here, uh, according to the diagrams. And this is one, two, three, and four. We should have grounds on the outside and 12 volts or battery voltage actually permanent voltage on these two middle pins so i'm gonna get battery voltage from here on top of the fuse box if you know the car you know where i'm taking this from let me put this so we don't have a minus on the multimeter okay, so pin number one we have 12 58 59 it's fine Number four, 1258.59, so that's fine. Now, I'm gonna use the ground on the plug. And I'm gonna measure the others too. So number two, so number three, what? So we have 0 0.5 volts on number three. Number two, we have battery voltage. So to start with, we have no voltage on pin number three and just before we go any far any further <clears throat> let me see which one is the ignition voltage so ignition voltage comes from hold on guys let me have a look I think it's pin 18, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure it's pin 18. Eighteen. Uh, it's going to be number 18 because it's, it's ignition there, look. I have ignition there. Oh, sorry, you are not watching. We have ignition there. H001 and that powers fuse number 37 on the body control module I believe it is uh, this is the body control module or oh, the fuse box under the, the dash I think it is uh, fuse 37 10 amps and that comes straight to down here and the powers fuse as you can see is all the same and it powers fuse 42 7.5 amps which comes through this wire here all the way to pin 18 so I'm sure it's pin 18. We're going to measure pin 18 anyway. Just make sure we have so 16, 17, 18. And we have 0 volts. I'm going to turn the ignition on and see if that changes. And there we go, 11.54. Obviously we have less voltage now because the ignition is on and it's taking power, obviously. So, and this, as far as, according to the diagrams, is the only voltage we are supposed to have. Uh, yeah, I think it's the only voltage, as far as I'm aware, is the only thing, I think. Uh, we should have some voltage on pin 20... twenty and 23, something like that, I think it looks like. Oh no, that's the brake pedal, sorry. No, 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 23 is, is the brake pedal signal. Uh, yeah, so no, no, forget about it. So yeah, so I've, I believe this is the, the, the only voltage it comes to the to the unit. So we definitely have a problem here with number three. 
So let me see. Let me see what we should have an me. So pin number three. So let's gonna see if we can see this as well. So number three. So number two. <coughs> so down here you have one and four. So ground, that's fine. We check that one. So number two and number three. So number two goes straight. B001 is the box underneath the camera. Is this box here. And let me place the phone again so we can carry on recording. Oh. Okay, so number two goes to the fuse box. Uh, fuse 1, 40 amps. And that comes straight from the battery as you can see. It goes on there and it splits right into this two fuse. Oh, there we go, look. F1 goes straight to number 2, 40 amps. F23 is a 30 amps and goes straight to number 3. So I doubt they didn't check this, the garage where this came from. I doubt they didn't check this. But let's let let's gonna have a look. Uh, let's gonna have a look. Actually, it's gonna be. Hang on. The ABS function description actually tells me something about this fuse 23. Uh, I read it before I print, but I've only printed the page I was interested on. Uh, let me have a look. Let, let's gonna have a look at the just curiosity, really. And sorry for the background noise, guys, but here it is. So, M051, so the brake control unit, is supplied directly from the battery at pin number 2 for the electronics and pin number 3 for the solenoids. If you remember the code was something to do with the solenoids uh, and, and they are powered by pin number 3 uh, via lines protected res respectively, F1 for the electronics, F23 for the solenoids. Okay, so obviously this just starts to make sense why we had communications with the unit. Electronics were powered, but they were, they were, they were um, um, faulting for the solenoids because we have no power on that pin number three, which we're going to have a look soon or next. Uh, so he also receives uh, ignition operator pin 18. We just checked that. was fine. We had that in there. Uh, and that's it really uh, the four sensors it tells me the sensors I have all that all the rest of the information there anyway so that's it guys so that just curiosity so you can read this through but yeah so this makes all the sense let's gonna check that pin number three then let's gonna see where let's gonna check that fuse first and go from there and I'm confused now because fuse 23 is actually missing so, what's going on here? So, fuse number, which is number one, is the top. No, it's the bottom according to the diagram, isn't it? I'm sure it's the bottom one. Yeah, this fuse is good. But we have a fuse missing. Uh, 30, 30 amps, I think it was. A 30 amps fuse is missing there. Hmm. That's gonna make sure that, well, the diagrams are not going to be wrong, but just let, let's going to check if that uh, pin 3 comes actually straight into there. I'm going to place the phone. Okay, so pin number 3. And fuse 28. There we go. Zero ohms. And obviously nothing on the other side, so zero ohms. So it comes straight to here. Why has the fuse been removed? Let me see if we have a short to ground on this wire here. So ground. Obviously that goes off because there's voltage there, as you can see. But this side, which is the wire side, is not short to ground. So it doesn't make any sense why the fuse has been removed. What's going on here? I'll tell you what's going on. I'm going to put the fuse back in. And we're going to see if the fault for the solenoids goes away. 
Why would have they... Ah, go figure. Go figure out. Okay, let's gonna put the fuse back in. I'm not gonna put a 30 amps, just in case something is wrong. I'm gonna put probably half of that, uh, maybe a 15 amps, just in case something is not right. And um, we're gonna plug the module back in, and we're gonna scan the car, see, see, see what happens. Okay, so I put a 15 amp fuse, and we plug the module. Uh, the fuse still all good. So we're gonna now turn the ignition on. But the first thing I want to do is turn the ignition on and make sure the fuse stays alive. So ignition on. Let me check. Are the fuse still good? Yep, it's still good. You can't probably see it, but it's still good. Which means seems that we are good in there. Now I'm gonna plug the maxi sys and we're gonna scan the module again. Okay, so we have the maxi sys plugged in. It took me 10 minutes to find a spot where the glare wouldn't be that bad. But look at that! So if you remember, even I had to go back and check on the clips because obviously it was a long time ago. But if you remember these, um, oops, these 1121, the first code you see was present would say valve relay no additional information then would say present we just plugged it in as you've seen and it becomes intermittent we have the rear right and rear left present because we still have that plug underneath right at the back that I've showed you uh, it's still unplugged uh, recirculation motor is because the module is not attached uh, which means the, 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 the motor connections uh, are now obviously connected to the module so the module could not uh, check them for the motor so <laughs> that, that, that's I, I'm gonna be surprised I mean I, I'm gonna be really surprised if at least for the relays the only problem was that um, fuse missing why would if they remove the fuse <clears throat> so from here what am I going to do from here? Let me think. Uh, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to temp... Uh, no, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the module back in place. But I'm not going to put all the bolts back in. I'm just going to put it in there and maybe just one bolt just to secure it in place. Uh, plug everything back in. And, um, and see which codes comes back. I'm going to delete the codes now, uh, and I'm sure the only codes that are going to come back are going to be the ones for the rear wheels and for the motor, or just for the motor. So it didn't even came for the rear wheels, which is a little bit weird. Let me go back and just do one thing, if we cycle the ignition. I'm sure those will come back, I think. Someone is angry over there. Okay, let's gonna read the codes. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that's what I've said. So we still have these two. The valves are gone, the code are, is gone. We have this, so this will go away once we plug the module back in place. These two, well, it was still a uh, fault for one of the sensors, so we're gonna plug that back in and see if they, I mean, I believe one is going to come back probably, I don't know, uh, unless that would have something to do with the, with the, that fuse. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do that. Mm, okay. Just before we do all that, I just thought it would be interesting to actually measure the circuit for the ABS sensors. So I've plugged that back in to the rear sensors. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna measure these circuits. Uh, so, I think you can see the, re the screen, yeah, you can. <coughs> so accordingly to this diagram, oh, I can't put this here because otherwise you won't see it. So accordingly to these diagrams, According to these diagrams, so K070 is the 
left front wheel sensor and that's go to pin 5 and 16 I'm gonna measure it 5 and 16 and we have 20 26 ohms on this sensor K071 is the right front wheel sensor and that's been 10 and 9 so 10 so 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 <coughs> Where's 9 and 10, yeah. See. Ah. Uh, okay. So we have roughly the same readings. Or very close. And by the looks of it, because of these readings, because it only reads the resistance if I put it one way, it sounds like these are what they call um, active sensors, I think it is okay okay that's fine we can still measure them so we have roughly the same on the front one so k075 is going to be the rear left rear wheel and that's been 17 and 6 so 6 17 once again 24 mega ohms so we are having roughly the same as the other one <clears throat> and the last sensor is K076 and that's gonna be pin 19 and 8 so 8, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 19 16, 17, 18, 19 okay so we have nothing this way as you can see let me just swap the probes And we have four mega homes. So definitely a completely different reading from the rear right. I can't remember if this is the one that was faulting at the start of the video. Uh, but if it is, uh, it seems I'm going to check the video as well because I don't know. Uh, <laughs> or I will just scan the car again. But by the looks of it, it sounds like we have a problem, uh, obviously, with the circuit. Um, okay, yeah, it sounds like we have a problem somewhere. Okay, so let's gonna do what was said just earlier. Let's gonna put this in place, plug it in, and see if the only code back comes back now, according to our readings here, if it's gonna be the rear right. Okay, so I put it all in. Uh, I didn't really put any bolts, it kind of holds there, okay, so it, sh it should be fine. And we're gonna scan the car again the van, the track, whatever you want to call it okay so it's gonna turn ignition back on something wrong with this ignition, what's going on? Ah. okay ignition on it's gonna come back from here actually should have done this now Mission on. It's gonna scan the module again. Rear right. Was that correct? I think it was. Okay. Out. Should have done this different, but it's gonna work this time. I hope. I hope I don't need to put a screw in there. I mean, it's kind of quite well attached. So, read codes. Rear right. Bingo. So there is a problem. So our readings with the multimeter just kind of supported exactly what we said 
uh, what what is here really uh, there is something wrong with that circuit from the module to the back but all the other codes as you can see they're all gone now so I have a feeling that as soon as we resolve as soon as we resolve this problem with this circuit our ABS light will go off um, so I'm a little bit confused now uh, does that means is that gonna mean that the two pumps I've opened at the start they were burned hang on maybe maybe guys that fuse box has been changed maybe that fuse box maybe I don't know the full story maybe was something wrong with that fuse box at the front um, they replaced the fuse box after those two pumps replaced uh, they say, and then they put this new one it would be interesting to open this pump to see if that was burned in the same place I bear with you is not I bear with you was something wrong with that fuse because when you look at the, the, the fuse holder I just went to look uh, um, uh, what, what, I went to look well, when I first put the fuse if you look properly on the camera I don't know how good it's gonna look it doesn't have any marks of ever a fuse been there so it might be that this was from a different truck um, and and it never had actually a fuse in there and they just replaced the fuse box and uh, actually let's kind of have a look see if there's any marks of that being replaced I'm not gonna lie to you guys it doesn't have I mean this cable here this nut it doesn't have any marks of being touched recently um, there's no marks I mean th this would be the main thing that would tell me but to be fair with you I don't know for how long the car has been like this so you know but it starts to make some sense that maybe maybe these didn't belong here and when they replaced this that was from a car from a van without ABS maybe and that fuse was not there um, maybe it was a problem with the other well, with the other box I don't know this is the problem when I get cars that you don't have the full story of the problems but uh, is a, it, it is a little bit weird that uh, the fuse was missing we put the fuse all the codes are gone except the ABS sensor which we knew was a problem with it although I've been told that's been replaced with a brand new one but that's something that we'll check but yeah so I I can't understand it would be interesting to open this pump to see if that burn mark was there and that's something that's normal on these pumps I doubt it doesn't it doesn't look normal to me um, but I don't think I'm gonna open this pump guys um, I'm curious about it but I don't think I'm gonna do it I'm not gonna waste my time doing it it, it might be that just the, the 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 first pump something went and they might have been unlucky to get a second hand pump that came with the same problem and perhaps this pump now is good uh, don't know so let's gonna now start to trace the problem with that rear right ABS sensor I'm gonna look at this rear right sensor see what we can see here uh, where is the sensor is right there at the back now let me go to the other side okay so indeed uh, it looks like a new sensor there I don't know if you can see how clean the cable is so is that cable is the bottom cable that you see and it, indeed it looks like a clean cable like a new cable yeah yeah it comes all the way to this plug here and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug this here I'm gonna short the wires at the other end on the ECU and uh, I'm gonna check here for resistance and I'm gonna bear with you we're gonna have an open circuit let's gonna have a look at it oh. okay so we have shorted these two wires here these two pins here which is the pins that goes to that sensor and now we're gonna measure the circuit and we should have close to zero ohms if we do not have that means we have an open circuit and we're gonna have to trace it okay let me get everything set up and then we'll continue okay so you can see the screen I've unplugged this I'm just gonna show you oh 
we unplug that and I'm gonna put the probes on the car's loom and check for resistance on this circuit. Place the camera again so you can see the reading, you can see the screen. Not very good, can you? Oh, you can see it now. And I can't, bloody hell. I'm just gonna... So, one pin. The pin. What do we have? Look at that. 0 0.5 mega ohms. We should have a closed circuit because obviously we just jumped the two pins at the other end. So we have a, a damaged wire somewhere. So I'm not going to take you through the inspection, but I'm going to try to follow this uh, and try to see if I find where the broken wire is. Okay. Okay. Let's go for it then. Okay, so a visual inspection uh, from there. The cable runs from there. Then emerges this big loom here. Well, this bigger loom here. Comes all the way through here. Okay. Can't really see nothing, can you? Okay, so it runs all the way through here under the chassis. All the way, all the way to the front. Um, at the front, uh, when it goes over the, not the wheel arch, um, but around the wheel arch, it looks a little bit, there's a lot of mud in there and, and stuff, but uh, it's all inside this corrugated uh, tubing, so you can't really see the wires. And because it's such a long um, run of wires, I think it's going to be time for me to take my power probe out of the box again, because... Hopefully that will point me uh, to the right place where the where the problem is. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to plug the power probe and we'll go from there. Okay, so I decided not to use the power probe. I decided to to do it uh, uh, differently because mainly because not all of you guys are going to have access to the power probe. And I thought it would be interesting because this a kind of easy access to this is a is a tall car. Although I had to put the the, the jack in there, but it's, it's quite easy to trace this. I'll decide to show you slightly different. So what I've done is I've removed the wires from the corrugated um, tube in there. Uh, I've checked the wires; everything was good up to there. So this is the plug that is right at the back of the pump. So I've took it from the front. That's why I put the jack in there. And then I've stripped. I didn't strip that little bit here, but I came all the way, and then here, we're gonna have to obviously insulate these wires afterwards, but here, I've just put one of those uh, probes, like that, and I've checked from here, to the plug, and that's a check, so the wire from here to there is good. Then, I came back, and I've done the same here, and still from here, all the way there, all the way to the front, still good. So, my problem is gonna be somewhere from here to the wire, to the ABS plug. And all I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna put the probe again over there, somewhere there. And I just, I'm just narrowing down the area where the problem is gonna be. And soon, we will find it. Okay, and from there, So now here, still good. So my problem, I think, let me get under the car, is gonna be, so from the actually plug, sorry, from the actually plug, these wires here, that runs across the, the chassis to that side, uh, inspecting the wires is good. So as you can see, the probe is now here. So I only have this little bit here. So my problem, I believe, is going to be somewhere here. I tell you, what, I'm going to be P off if the problem is going to be somewhere just right after the plug. The wires here, inspecting the wires, they look all good from here up to there. So this will be here somewhere. So we're going to take this off and open this here and see if we can trace this down. Actually, I tell you what we're going to do. You can hear the beep from the thingy, I'm sure. Tell what I'm gonna do. 
Okay, let, let me turn this so I can actually put the camera facing like that. Let me put the probe now. So the probe is here and we have connection. Let me put the probe right here. If we have a if it's faulty here, then that means it's really in this little bit of wires here. It's gonna put it here. We're gonna have to repair all these guys. And that's it, look. Nothing here. Yep. We have nothing here. So we have, just to confirm. So we have here. Can you hear the beep? And we have nothing on this end. So my problem is gonna be in this bit here. From here to here. Uh, why I didn't start at the back? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna strip this and, and obviously we're gonna find the problem quite quite easily, I believe. Voila! Look at that. You see that? I think you can't really miss it, can you? That's my problem. It was right here on these little bends here. Hang on. It was right here on this sort of diversion of wires, right there. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's only. Actually, there's both. The other one is also on its way. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the other one. Right, you can see the other one is also is also not in very good shape. Uh, so we're gonna repair both. We're gonna repair both, and uh, we should have this problem resolved. Uh, I'm not gonna explain you how to repair the wires. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below uh, to a video that I've done where I show you how to repair wires, like in a in a, in, a, in a place like this outside the car so watch that video if uh, if you want but yeah we're gonna repair the wires put everything back on I'm not gonna take you through that either put everything back on we're gonna repair uh, these little bits that have been piercing uh, just with a little bit of um, liquid tape uh, and then obviously uh, insulation tape we're gonna do that uh, repair everything put everything back in place and then we're gonna scan the car again and uh, hopefully we'll have a fix okay guys uh, the maxi is is nearly running out battery so I don't want to take too long but what I'm gonna quickly do is the following so what we have here guys is we have the module that the car came with now this last time we have if you remember uh, module a which was the module that I've first opened which was the second module they put in um, and I've been with the tweezers around there, so I don't want to do nothing with this module. But module B, uh, I haven't actually touched the module. So the module is absolutely fine, no problems at all. Uh, I mean, I haven't messed about with the module. We only opened the module and I put it under the microscope, that's all I've done. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to plug this module, I'm going to put this module in there. And uh, I want to see exactly uh, what, what it's going to do. Uh, I want to try to understand if that thing that we saw uh, on that connection, that seems to me that is burned, if that is actually a burn or, or if that is part of the module. A little bit weird. Um, I would figure it out by opening that one, I think. Uh, although I don't know yet if the, the arrows are gone. Uh, so we, re we repaired the wire, uh, put everything back together. And uh, and we should have, if you remember the last thing last time, was the sensor. So, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to plug this in and I'm going to scan the car or the van. And um, I, I want to see exactly what comes up with. Unfortunately, that's just gone dead. I'm going to have to get the charger. But yeah, that's what we're going to do. Just out of curiosity, really. Okay guys, uh, we have to be a little bit quick on this because the Maxis is only charged to about 9% or something like that. But what I want to show you is, so 
in there at the moment so this is pump A or you module A module B which was the one that I've never touched we only we only opened it and that's the the one that came with the car this last time now so in there now is module is the module one of the modules we, we opened and what I want to do now is I want to show you this look at that oh yeah so it's a little bit confusing to me for me why why that sort of burn inside the module now there is one thing yet we haven't drive the car so all these they show intermittent uh, on this pump so uh, I'm sure this was the codes that were there before obviously uh, so the guy was right it was the same codes obviously so we're gonna go back I'm gonna erase these codes from that unit Press OK. We're going to come off the unit. Now I'm going to cycle the ignition. And now I'm going to scan the module again. And look at that. So. Uh, so the light is on because I'm on the module as soon as I come out of the module that will go away as you can see So uh, I'm gonna put this pump back on uh, this pump. I'm gonna put this uh, um, This module back on uh, the one that came last uh, Because that burn that we've seen under the microscope. I'm not sure uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I think to be hundred percent sure I would have to take this one out or open this one and have a look if all three were the same it's a little bit weird that the module comes like that but uh, I'm not gonna open this it's still sealed from factory I'm not gonna open this module uh, I'm just gonna leave it uh, so we're gonna put this one back on uh, and I'm gonna do the same clear the codes but as you can see the problem is fixed I will go for a drive um, if, if I don't record nothing after the drive is because the car has been just is because the van is just fine um, I, I could I, I'm gonna leave that uh, that uh, Start of the video obviously I mentioned it uh, throughout the video I'm gonna leave when we check the, the the modules under the microscope and all that I think it's something interesting to see um, I, I'm puzzled why that is burned. Uh, I don't know it would be interesting if any uh, any any one of you guys out there do have a unit like this and you want to open it and uh, put it under the microscope um, it'll be interesting to see if it does have that burn like these two uh, have uh, I would open this just but uh, uh, look the car is here for too long I just wanna I just want these out of the way that's it guys uh, I don't have anything else to say really uh, all I have to say now is we fixed the problem so broken wire uh, on that for that sensor and uh, a fuse missing which was a little bit weird uh, and that's it I go for a drive with the car like I said already if you don't see anything after this is because the car uh, the problem has been fixed guys hope you enjoyed the video hope there's some information here somehow you can take to fix something uh, any questions any comments, you know put them below and like always. Thank you so much for watching